Okay, can you see the, the, my presentation, right? Okay, is it okay? Comparative morphology of vertebrates, right? If you cannot see, please ra raise your hand, or if we, it's okay, I will go ahead. Is okay? Uh, okay, ma. Oh. Then, uh, today's uh, topic is uh, comparative morphology of vertebrates. And first of all, I want to sh introduce you these two textbooks, vertebrates, Comparative Anatomy, Function, Evolution by Kenneth Cardon, more than 800 pages, and the Functional Anatomy of Vertebrate, and uh, an Evolutionary Perspective by uh, Lim and uh, two more uh, uh, authors and editors. Uh, this book also really big book, seven, more than 780 pages. It looks like uh, too much, I think too much to most of you, I think. Then if you really, really want to learn the, the, what is comparative anatomy or morphology of vertebrate, I really strongly recommend you uh, check these books. I think our, in, our TI, uh, in our Academia Sinica's uh, library, I think we have these two books. Then, then if you are interested in the, the comparative uh, morphology of vertebrate, you can go to the library. Then today, then today I will not explain every content, or every, every detail of the vertebrate com comparative uh, morphology. Uh, I think my purpose of this lecture, is, this is just a, a three hours lecture, just I want to uh, explain new uh, or introduce you some terminology. So I listed these terminologies. The, these bold letter one, homology, pomoplasy, synapomorphy, common ancestor, monophyletic, paraphyletic, serial, homolo, serial homology, convergent evolution. I uh, write uh, these, uh, wrote these word in the uh, bold letter. They are quite an important concept. Then please, after, you uh, listen my uh, lecture and uh, learn uh, something from uh, as after you listen this uh, lecture please uh, try to uh, manipulate or think consider about uh, like uh, vertebrate morphology by using these terminology they're quite important i think uh, tigp program has uh, maybe you have to write a re report uh, for the, this lecture. In the report, I will ask you the problem related to uh, this kind of, this kind of the, the uh, terminology. Then today, uh, my assistant, Li uh, Lin Cha, is nearby here, and uh, she will help uh, my presentation, and sometime I will ask her, Lin Cha, do you, do, are you familiar with these terminologies? Uh, most of them, some of most them. Most of them, some of them. Okay, it's uh, it's okay. And the, the, after you listen this uh, lecture, I will. I sometimes I will ask you the definition, or if you don't know about them, it's okay. okay. And the, and the, the middle part, I can uh, you can see the similar terms. Uh, they are uh, they they are quite a basic, really basic words. Basic word. I think. Uh, to communicate to each other about uh, like uh, vertebrate morphology without uh, knowing these kind of the, the terminology it will be problem. Then I will explain again and again in my presentation. And the, I already g gave you the kind of the handout and in the, hand, in the handout you also can confirm these term anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral, cranial, postcranial, trunk, caudal, sagittal, horizontal, transverse, and the median the paired of fins. And uh, I will explain these ter terminologies. And uh, the box drawing is a kind of optional. This is a little bit more uh, related to the uh, vertebrate developmental biology. So uh, this is additional or optional topics, but they are quite important. And uh, to find the connection or relationship between morphology and the molecular data, this terminology will be important. Then if you really like, like 
vertebrate morphology or developmental biology, I really recommend to uh, survey the, these, ter these terms on the Google or internet or in on the library. Okay, so then let's, I will start my, uh, con uh, today's content is, uh, firstly, I will explain the, about the Elon Marine Station and uh, uh, I will, the secondary, I will talk about what is the similarity. Uh, similarity and the really basic terminology that I will explain and uh, vertebrate groups and their relationship will uh, be explained. And this is the first part. And uh, we have a, have a uh, like rest. And uh, later I will explain the, uh, my previous work. And explaining my previous work, I, we will confirm how to compare the vertebrate uh, body. And uh, in and I will mention, I will talk about the relationship between morphology and molecular biology, and I will check the time, and if time is enough, I will explain the evil devil of the twin tail goldfish. This is our, my current project uh, in my lab. So uh, we are in the Elan Marie station. Right, right, Linja? Yes. <laughs> yes, and uh, when you check the, the Google, the Academia Sinica, you always find uh, this kind of, you will see this kind of a map, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, but uh, our place is uh, not in the Taipei. We are in the? Jiaoxi. Jiaoxi, Iran. Uh, Jiaoxi, Iran is uh, uh, from uh, Nangan to uh, Jiaoxi. Uh, how many hours, uh, how many? One to two hours. One to two hours through the tunnel. And uh, uh, our place is uh, here. Uh, I feel it's countryside. Yes. <laughs> is it the countryside? And uh, the name is a marine station, but uh, actually from here to seaside, around three, uh, three kilometer, I think. Three kilometers, roughly. And from Jiao Si Hot Spring in the daily life, if you want to buy something, you go to here, right? Yes, the supermarket. The supermarket is around here. And around here is uh, only uh, shrimp field, shrimp field, and the shrimp field, and the shrimp pond. And uh, some people. Pound and uh, pound. filled, yes. Uh, field and the pound, yeah. So is it convenient place? Uh, <laughs> if you have. <laughs> Vehicles. Vehicles. You need a vehicle. The, from my house uh, to our lab is just one minute. And uh, I, we can start. Wake up and uh, immediately we can start our, my, uh, our lab work. Immediately. It's quite a nice place the, for, to the person who uh, uh, really like the, the research. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we have so many aquarium tanks. Right, and uh, fishermen also uh, help us to uh, prepare the fish material, and we can immediately start experimental work. So uh, now I am studying on the basically goldfish ibodebo and the actual skeletal evolution also. Uh, if you are interested in our laboratory now, I will not explain uh, too much details about our marine station, just you access uh, to the, uh, uh, our YouTube channel and you can scan this uh, QR code. Well, I already sent you the link of our uh, marine station's uh, website and you can see what kind of species are living in our marine station. And uh, so, and today's, in this, today's lecture, I provide the similar materials of the, the animals. It's quite hard to explain. Uh, like uh, this is online lecture and uh, just talk about uh, this, ma this living things is that living things is quite uh, difficult then for you to catch kind of the image or Im like uh, develop the imagination I provide the similar uh, video material so then the, if you have uh, your smartphone or your computer whichever all right you can uh, uh, do you have any quest yeah Uh, I cannot. 
I cannot hear oh, you. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's hi, okay. hi, uh, uh, Doctor. Hello. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I yeah, have yeah. a question. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I'm curious. Like, why uh, do you focus on studying about the evolution of goldfish? Oh, it's really, it's really, it's, it's really good question. And in the final part, part three, I will explain. And if you cannot wait uh, to uh, sorry, see the, sorry, the sorry. part three, you can click the uh, this part, the twin tail goldfish. <laughs> if you click this part, you can you can immediately <laughs> watch. <laughs> what, why I am studying on the goldfish evolution. Uh, Li Lin-cha, uh, uh, my assistant, is uh, really, really uh, good at what she already published the goldfish paper more than how many papers? Three. Well, uh, yes, uh, three. Three, three papers uh, from our lab. And I already published the goldfish e e e e e e e e book also. I think, I hope that you can find uh, our Academia Seneca's library, or if you cannot find, at least uh, I, you can download download, uh, download the, the online version of this book. Okay, then let's go to the, today's main subject, the similarity. Similarity is, okay, similarity, what does it mean, similarity, Ninja? Uh, the part that is similar to each other? Mm. Yes. Then, then, what do you think? This, is it is it a scientific word or not scientific word? Uh, it's some kind of result that you can get from comparison. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. Uh, if uh, like a basement or com how can I say, criteria is already fixed. The similarity can be used. A and B is similar. Yes. Or the something value A and the something value B yes. is uh, similar. But uh, sometimes this word make us con something it's uh, make made us uh, quite complicated, uh, complex. And uh, in the sense of the in the in the field of the uh, morphology, this word can be divided into uh, three. Homology, analogy, homoplasy. Is it the high school sub high school biology subject or in the I don't know in Taiwan or foreign country have you learned homology and homoplasy? No. No. Oh, okay. Then the similarity is. Uh, especially morphology or evolutionary study or uh, biology or not only the vertebrate morphology, uh, like uh, the, the insect also, the animal morphology, in the field of the animal morphology, the, this word have to be carefully used. The similarity is just similar, but how can we compare? It's quite important. So homology is uh, considered about ancestor. And analogies uh, looks the same, and homoplasy is more function. So this is quite an important concept. And these categories are slightly overlapping. I will explain more than two times in my presentation. So analogy is uh, structure? Structure looks like similar. There is not so solid. Uh, uh, looks like similar. It's quite ambiguous. To me also, in the, at least in my study, I haven't used the analogy. Well, analogous relationship can be used, but homology has a quite solid definition. Yes. This one, that one is homologous. And homoplasy also has a quite a solid definition, but there is an ambiguous point. Okay, let's see the example. The homology is, for example, our hand, horses, four limbs and the seals for whole limbs. They are homologous. They are homologous. Because it looks like they have the same ancestor. Same, uh, looks like derived from the same ancestor, even though their function is totally different. The human arm for the catch, catch something, and the horse for limbs for the running, and the seal for limb for the swimming, uh, quite suitable. Right, so that homoplasy is uh, l like like them, the bird wing, 
bat, bat wing and the, the flying dinosaur's wing. They are homor, homoplasy. They have all of, of them has the same function, but uh, they are not share the closely latest common ancestor, or clo most closely related common ancestor. Then they are recognized as a homoplasy, right? So this is, I think this is a textbook level explanation, but you feel something ambiguous or strange. Because feeling. that's weird, because so <laughs> if you compare the, like, because mm. for human we are mammal, but mm. if you compare our legs mm. to the other mammal that mm. they walk in with four legs, mm. so we have... Right, 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 homoplasy. Yes. Okay. Homoplasy is like this, and it looks like the same, but their ancestor is, uh, they, what, which lineage derived, derived from are different, because of bat, bat is a uh, mammalia, right? Yes. Bat is a mammalia, and uh, bird is, a uh, uh, bird is bird lineage, avian lineage, and uh, this dinosaur's lineage are, uh, this is there is argument later on I will explain, but uh, this is uh, differ from the mammalian lineage. So like, kind of like a reptile. Reptile. Then they are called as a homoplasy. Then mm, make a little bit more clear. Let's uh, think about the phylogenetic relationship using this uh, this slide. So you. My uh, you can see these uh, two uh, phylogenetic tree, and uh, you can read this, these two words, monophyletic and paraphyletic, right? Monophyletic and paraphyletic is really important uh, concept. So then, uh, if the monophyletic, in this phylogenetic tree, X, Y, Z, they are, they are uh, s uh, some kind of species or group, whichever, whatever, all right. And uh, if you recognize Y and Z, Z, Z is monophyletic, uh, the same group, this will be monophyletic group. And X, Y, Z, if you feel, oh, this is the same, if you recognize they are the same group, they are uh, recognized as a monophyletic group because X and Z sharing the common ancestor, right? And you recognize they are common ancestors, they are sharing a common ancestor, they are a kind of group. And this relationship, this grouping is really natural, natural, right? And how about this grouping? The phylogenetic relationship is the same, X, Y, Z is like this, Y and Z sharing the really close common ancestor, and X located on the here, outside. But uh, some people feel that uh, this X, Y, X, and uh, Y looks like the same group. But uh, this doesn't reflect the, this grouping is quite artificial. This, yes. this, is, uh, this is called as a paraphyletic group. Sounds strange, sounds strange, right? What can be happened in this kind of strange event? Human arbitrarily categorize living things and uh, give some name, give uh, some specific name and talk, discuss about science. It's really strange, but uh, it can be happened. For example, birds, abyss, and mammalia, we can categorize them as a warm blood animal. Their body temperature is high, then they are really, uh, it's a really warm blood uh, animal, reptiles and amphibia is uh, called. And yes. uh, they are different. Then I made a category, one of the category, birds and uh, abyss. Is the same group, is it natural or not? <laughs> Actually, this is not natural, right? Because uh, from here to here, in the intermediate part, uh, you can recognize Reptaria. Hey, Reptaria is in here. In the modern phylogenetic analysis, suggested like this. Then this grouping is uh, sounds strange, right? Yes. Uh, actually, unnatural, right? Then 
So in the reptilia also, you recognize reptilia is reptilia, right? Reptilia is reptilia. Then this is the same group. Yes, right? Maybe. Maybe. The grouping is okay, but the reptilia also it separated into similar group. Then people believing that the reptilia is a group, a really natural kind of group, but uh, this is not a natural. They are paraphyletic group. Later on, I will explain. But the important point is, uh, let's think about uh, homo... Right, right, right. Homoplasy. Yes. Okay. Homoplasy is uh, like this. And it uh, looks like the same, but uh, their ancestor is... Uh, uh, they, what, which lineage derived, derived from are different? Because of bat, bat is... Uh, uh, Mammalia, right? Yes. Bird is a mammalia, and uh, bird is uh, uh, a bird is bird lineage, avian lineage, and uh, this dinosaur's lineage. Are, uh, this is there is argument later on. I will explain, but this is uh, differ from the mammalian lineage. So like, kind of like reptile. Reptile. Then they are called as a homoplasy. Then mm, make a little bit more clear. Let's uh, think about the phylogenetic relationship using this uh, this slide. So you might see, uh, you can see these uh, two uh, phylogenetic tree, and uh, you can read these these two words: monophyletic and paraphyletic. Right? Monophyletic and paraphyletic is really important uh, concept. So then. Uh, if the monophyletic in this phylogenetic tree X Y Z they are they are uh, uh, some kind of species or group whichever whatever all right and if you recognize Y and Z Z, Z is monophyletic uh, the same group this will be monophyletic group and X Y Z if you feel oh this is the same if you recognize they are the same group. They are uh, recognized as a monophyletic group because X and Z sharing the common ancestor, right? And you recognize they are common ancestors. They are sharing a common ancestor. They are a kind of group. And this relationship, this grouping is really natural, natural, right? And how about this grouping? The phylogenetic relationship is the same. X, Y, Z is like this. Y and Z are sharing the really close common ancestor. And the X located on the here, outside. But the, some people feel that oh, this X, Y, X and Y looks like the same group. But this doesn't reflect to the, this grouping is quite artificial. This, yes. this, is uh, this is called as a paraphyletic group. Sounds strange. Sounds strange, right? What can be happened in this kind of strange event? Human arbitrarily categorize living things and uh, give some name, give uh, some specific name and talk, discuss about science. It's really strange, but uh, it can be happened. For example, birds, abyss, and the mammalia we can categorize them as a warm blood animal. Their body temperature is high, then they are really, uh, it's a really warm blood animal, reptiles and amphibia is cold. And yes. they are different. Then I made a category, one of the category, bird and abyss. It's the same group, is it a natural or not? <laughs> Actually, this is not natural, right? Because uh, from here to here, in the intermediate part, uh, you can recognize Reptaria. Hey, Reptaria is in here. In the modern phylogenetic analysis, suggested like this. Then this grouping is uh, sounds strange, right? Yes. Uh, actually, unnatural, right? Then, so in the Reptaria also, you recognize Reptaria is Reptaria, right? Reptaria is Reptaria, then this is the same group, yes, right? Maybe. Maybe. The grouping is okay, but the Reptaria also it separated into similar group. Then 
people believing that the reptilia is a group, a really natural kind of group, but uh, this is not the natural. They are paraphyletic group. Later on, I will explain. But the important point is, uh, let's think about the uh, homology. The, to think about, identify the homology, the homologous organ must be shared and derived from the same common ancestor. Yes. Uh, then bird. Bird, but the uh, flying dinosaur, uh, uh, pteranodon, uh, pterano, pteranosaurus, pteranodon. The, they are, their lineage is different, even though their shape is, looks like the same, and the function is uh, the same, but uh, they, are from, from, they are derived from the different lineage. Then yes. in this case, we, we, we recognize they are not homologous, they are homoplasy. And the homoplasy or homology, ju when just you think about uh, this is the same or not homology or homoplasy, uh, you, you can, I, it's better you consider carefully the relationship of these animals. Then warm blood animals, warm blood, then this is maybe independently occurred. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, the, this, uh, this, I will not get into the deep about this point. It's, it's, it has an uh, argument. But the point is, why this kind of things happen is uh, because uh, language or to talk about the uh, bread, you are sharing, <laughs> to talk about vertebrate uh, morphology or to compare. Uh, different uh, co to compare one species with uh, the other species, you have to uh, be careful how to compare uh, between them or be between them. Right? And uh, uh, just the people indicate this part is head or this part is tail is uh, it it contains a little bit. Uh, it's quite ambiguous. So then. For the vertebrate morphology, uh, people already made uh, quite nice terminology. And we can, uh, basically, we can commonly use almost all of the uh, vertebrate species. And here you can see the jellyfish. A jellyfish is a problem because uh, this is uh, this body shape or body plan or shape is obviously different. The pig, uh, human, uh, rat or a mouse, I think a dinosaur also. You recognize two, can recognize two eyes. Uh, maybe this is a little bit difficult, but they have two eyes and two legs, two arms, and uh, yeah, their, their body shape is a, uh, body shapes is symmetric, uh, left right symmetric. Basically, our body is left right symmetric. But the jellyfish is uh, not the left right. It's quite hard to identify left or right axis and radially, radial symmetry. So obviously, this, they, this one and uh, these uh, animals are obviously different. Yes. And uh, basically, we bilaterally uh, sharing the bilateral symmetry. And uh, uh, vertebrate also bilateral animals. So then basically, we can identify left side, uh, left and right side. Left to right is nothing difficult. I think you also can see the left and right, right side. And the uh, anterior, posterior, the front side and the back side also, uh, not, not really difficult, I think. You are human, and the human front side, back side. But there is a trick, <laughs> because it is a three-dimensional thing. It's quite hard to explain. So then I, then please scan the orientation and the section brain. Please scan what you, I already give you the, the material and please check it. So some people feel that oh, arbitrary researcher defines head, trunk, tail, but uh, this, if some, someone arbitrarily defined as they like, we cannot communicate each other. So basically, the, there is a definition. There are definition, the, how, uh, we can define the head region is uh, around here. Maybe you can recognize gill is around here, and the end of the gill is the uh, head region. And uh, 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 the ma 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 more an uh, end of the gill is a boundary of between head and the trunk. And the cloaca is here, and the cloaca 
and the boundary between trunk and the tail is uh, corresponding. So based on the position of the gill and the cloaca, we can uh, define the uh, centralized nerve system. And uh, in the trunk region, segmentally arranged uh, skeletons are recognized. And actually, in this, in this, uh, this is goldfish skeleton. And you can see uh, these, our head is here, and the segmentally arranged actual skeletons can be recognized in the post-cranial region, mm. right? And uh, so head region is here, and the skeleton, the actual skeleton, or post-cranial skeleton is here. Okay, let's change the direction also. The brain case, or skull is here, and this uh, ribs and the actual skeleton, the trunks, in the, on the trunk region, you... Uh, yeah, okay, microphone, <laughs> okay, microphone. And uh, you can see the turtle and the chick skull also in here. So then, let's, uh, this is a kind of a practice part. Describe the procedure using anatomical terminology, how this uh, fish uh, uh dissecting this fish. It, 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 can you explain? Please explain, Lincha, please explain uh, using anatomical terminology. Can you try? Uh, please try to explain this. Okay, oh, okay. What does he doing? Uh, <laughs> cleaning the fish <laughs> from the venture side? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, something like this. <laughs> yeah, something like this. <laughs> He opened the ventral side of the, the fish body and the cleaning. And uh, now he did, uh, uh, did a sagittal section. I think we cannot recover, uh, we, I cannot uh, see carefully, uh, I cannot see this from this direction, but uh, the ventral side is already open and the clean up. And uh, from dorsal side, uh, the, this guy chopped. And the head region also, this is a sagittal plane section, right? Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah sagittal plane. And, uh, fine, then this part, in this part, uh, this is horizontal section. And uh, uh, this is horizontal, uh, not horizontal, transverse section, right? Yes. And uh, now, this is a sagittal plane. This is a transverse plane. Right? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 uh. In this work, I couldn't see any horizontal section. Horizontal section plane. He because nobody eats no, fish like that. Uh, horizontal is, uh, uh, in the fish cooking, I haven't seen any horizontal section. Mm. Mm. Right? right? So in, the, in my YouTube channel, I already give indicator, and this is a horizontal section, this, this is a sagittal, or this is a anterior, posterior. I already uh, made, uh, made a movie, so if you forget, if, if you forget this, which, is, which is which direction, please uh, check f uh, frequently again and again. You, you keep the, the link in the, your smartphone and listening, and when you forget the direction, check the, the, the name of the... But recently, home genome, whole genome sequencing data is available, and you uh, can frequently recognize this kind of big phylogenetic tree. And in this kind of phylogenetic tree, vertebrate, vertebrata is here, and you mm, can see this tunicate, the name of the tunicate. The tunicate is this kind of animal. So, but the, the pro problem is. Uh, Proteostome and the protostome, how are they different? And uh, then in the adult body, just for uh, it's quite hard to uh, using adult body. It's quite hard to explain. But uh, in the early developmental process, uh, we can recognize obvious difference. I think this will make you really easy. I, this this. Uh, these pictures will make you convinced how uh, we are 
differ from the, uh, for example, squid or uh, arthropod, the animals which are categorized into the the pro, uh, protostome is fish, the yolk is here, the mouth is here, the squid, the yolk is here. And the squid mouth is here, mm, what does it mean? It's really, really topology or position of the uh, yolk is so, so different. Then there we, our lineage is, even though this squid has eyes, or goldfish also has eyes, or we are, looks like friend, but actually the, our body plan and the, the squid or octopus, the body plan is so different. Pictures, echinoderm, hemicodate, amphiochysis, and tunicate, they are, but they are obviously looks like primitive. You feel impressions, your impression is primitive. This one, the squid is much more closely related with, uh, with us. For example, what do you feel? Is it your friend? Or squid or octopus is your friend? Which one do you like, octopus or uh, sea urchin? Neither. Octopus, brittle rooster or, or octopus? Which one is your friend? This one or uh, this one? Uh, uh, really looks like really, fa shape is really strange. Hemicordate also like this. The relatives of the vertebrate is this one, not octopus. Mm. And the amphioxus also. So this is, looks like, like fish. So maybe this one is related with us, yeah. yeah. Actually, this one has a really important morphological feature. This is a notochord. We have a vertebrate, and the vertebrate also has have not mm, have not occurred during the developmental process, and uh, this one tunicate, also our relatives, but looks like uh, obviously far from our body shape. Very different. Very very different. But uh, in the larval stage, this one also forms a not occurred. So then they are called categorized. The, the the living things have a it. We also the tunicate also. We are the, the related lineage. The octopus embryo has no this kind of n this kind of cord or not a cord, right? Okay, let's confirm the confirm the representative uh, feature of the uh, organ system uh, of vertebrate, right? I again I will use this picture. The vertebrate in comparison with uh, this kind of the tunicate, there is a similar characteristic features. Of course, the tunicate and the vertebrate has a, a not a code, but uh, some uh, specific, uh, some uh, morphological feature or phenotypic feature is, uh, should be vertebrate specific, exclusively vertebrate specific. I mean, uh, octopus has, has this one or that one, but uh, uh, vertebrate has not, or octopus has, has not this kind of feature, and uh, we have this one. And uh, uh, tunicate or, un, uh, or some other echinoderm has that kind of uh, morphology or phenotype, but only but vertebrate uh, has not. Or this exclusively uh, s uh, vertebrate species have to have commonly share the characteristic feature. And in this scheme, uh, what is easily recognized is, is uh, relatively easily recognized. One is the brain and the skull and the segmentary arranged uh, vertebral element, right? So then this is uh, at least in the tunicate or echinoderm, echinoderm, like sea urchin, the weird animal. They have no this kind of, the, this type of the uh, actual skeletal system and the brain case, right? Because they have no such a sophisticated, centralized brain system. So then uh, I will explain the, but uh, I will introduce several, several vertebrate group. They have to have uh, those uh, characteristic features 
brain brain uh, like a case skull or uh, and uh, uh, axial skeletal uh, segmentary arranged axial skeleton. Thank you.